hello you guys welcome back to another video so in this video i'm going to be showing you guys how i make sadza sadza is a staple food of my home country of zimbabwe but before we get into this video please like subscribe and hit the post notification button so you know every time i post a new video let's get to cooking you guys okay you guys i'm going to be serving my sadza with some chicken wings but you can go ahead and use whichever piece of meat you like. I happen to want to eat chicken wings today. So I washed my chicken wings and I made sure that they were clean. And then I cut them here on the joint um, because I'm going to fry my chicken later. This is just to make sure that uh, my chicken will get fried evenly. So to my chicken, I'm going to be adding three cloves of garlic. I'm also going to be adding a tablespoon of paprika. This is just to give some color to the chicken. And I'm also going to be adding a teaspoon and a half of salt. I'm going to be using some hot water to my chicken, but you can go ahead and use some cold water if you like. I'm using hot water because I want it to cook faster. And so I'm going to be putting a little bit more water into my chicken because I'm going to be using, I'm going to use some of the stock later uh, for, to make the soup that I'm going to make for my chicken and to put some of the soup into my cabbage. So this is done. Just place it on the stove like this and cook it for about 15 minutes or until the chicken is done. So like I said earlier, I'm going to be serving um, cabbage with my salsa. I just chopped half a cabbage head, which I'm going to fry later. And to my cabbage, I'm going to add uh, half a bell pepper. You can go ahead and use whatever color you like. I just chopped up uh, two spring onions as well. Um, I'm going to be using two grated tomatoes. You can go ahead and chop your tomatoes. The problem with the tomatoes here in Germany is that they're semi-ripe meaning they're not completely ripe and when you try to fry them they don't completely fry through, through and so you have like these big chunks that you're biting on and I don't like that and so that's the reason why I just went ahead and grated my tomatoes but if you have ripe tomatoes you can go ahead and chop them that is not a problem I'm also going to be making soup for my um, chicken and for that I'm just going to be using some spring onions that I chopped up and half a bell pepper you can go ahead and use normal or, uh, onions if you like. I just happen to like spring onions. And I'm also going to be using two tomatoes that I just grated up. Like I said before, the tomatoes here are weird. They never get really ripe. And so that's the reason why I just grated them up. When your chicken is done, just go ahead and add some oil to your pan. I'm adding a little bit more oil than usual today because I'm going to use half of that oil later to fry some of my cabbage. Um, if you like a much healthier alternative, you can use an air fryer if you have one or you can add about two tablespoons of oil to your chicken and then place it in the oven and let the oven do the frying for you. If you'd much rather not fry your chicken, you can go ahead and just skip this part and uh, make your chicken the way you like it.
if you'd much rather not add any fried chicken to your soup just go ahead and leave it out and make the soup only Now I'm going to show you how to cook salsa. In order for us to cook salsa, we're going to need a couple of things. One of those things we're going to need is a wooden cooking spoon. We call it mugoti in my country. We're also going to need a wooden serving spoon. We call it a mugwaku in my country. And the main ingredient that we're going to need is maize meal, which we call hopeful. So I'm going to be making salsa that is enough for one person. So in my pot, I added um, 90 grams of maize meal. I'm also going to be adding 100 milliliters of cold water. You're just going to need to stir this and so you can create sort of a, a base for your sadza. Um, this is like a paste that you make. Um, you need to make sure that there aren't any lumps in your uh, base. That's why it's important that you use cold water. I'm also going to be adding 500 milliliters of boiling water. You can go ahead and add cold water, but if you add cold water, um, you're going to stand on the stove for a very long time until your sadza thickens. This is the reason why I've just went ahead and I used some um, boiling water because then I do not need to stand uh, on the stove for a very long time. So there are some things that you need to check out for. You need to stir your sadza until it starts getting thick. If your salsa does not look thick on your wooden spoon, then continue to stir or it will settle at the bottom and it will start burning. When your salsa started boiling, we call this kukwata. Cover your pot and reduce your heat to medium heat. That is the thickness and the consistency that we are looking for in our salsa. Just cover your pot and allow your salsa to cook for about 15 to 20 minutes. So my salsa has been boiling for 15 minutes and it is done. Now comes the part where we have to twist our salsa. We call this kumona in shona. I always start by adding a little bit of maize meal at a time because if you add too much maize meal at, a, at once, this will cause the salsa to get really firm and it will get really hard. So just go ahead and add a little bit of maize meal at a time until your salsa has become firm enough for you to start twisting it. Right now I'm just mixing in my maize meal because it's not yet firm enough for me to start twisting. 
but you can see on this point it has become firm enough and that is what we mean by twisting it you have to mix it in thoroughly until everything has mixed in you have to continue doing this for a couple of seconds and then you're just going to cover your pot and allow your sadza to simmer we call this kushinira make sure that you've reduced your heat or your sadza will start burning at the bottom you can even turn off the heat um, just to make sure that your sadza does not burn so in this part i'm just adding a little bit more maize meal to my sadza because it had not reached the consistency that i wanted just make sure when you're adding your maize meal not to add too much at a time or else your sadza will become very hard and you won't be able to enjoy it it will just feel heavy in your stomach When you're done twisting, just cover your pot and allow your salsa to simmer for about 30 seconds. That's enough. Um, after the 30 seconds are up, remove the lid and twist your salsa again for a couple of seconds. If you're making a bigger portion of salsa, then you're going to need to twist the salsa a little bit longer to make sure that everything is mixed thoroughly. When you make sadza, you need to make sure that it boils for at least 15 to 20 minutes or you will make undercooked sadza that we call mbodza in my country. Basically, you can only throw it away because you cannot eat it. And my sadza is done, ladies and gentlemen. It is ready to be served. So when you want to serve your sadza um, on the plate, you are going to need a bowl with some water and your wooden stick. Now the reason why um, we put um, the wooden stick in some water, it's just to make sure that um, the sadza does not stick onto the wooden stick. So you need to make sure that it is wet, it is wet all through and through. So I'm going to show you two different ways um, how we, some people like um, their sadza. Um, there are some people that like their sadza uh, mixed with their meat and vegetables. And there are some people that like their sadza separate from their meat and vegetables. So in this case, you're just going to be using the back of your wooden stick to mold your sadza until it looks perfect. When you're done serving your sadza, just go ahead and put some water in your pot. This is just to make sure that you can easily clean your pot later. You can serve your sadza on one plate and your vegetables and meat on another plate. It just depends um, for whom you're making the plate for. Um, there are some people that like to have their food on one plate. I'm one of those people. So just go ahead and ask um, the, what the person likes. In Zimbabwe, we eat our sadza with our hands. So just go ahead and pinch some sadza off. We call that musova. And then just make a ball with your sadza. Make a well in the center of your musova and pick up some vegetables. If you're new at eating sadza, just go ahead and use a fork and knife or a spoon. It doesn't matter, just as long as you enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you could learn a little bit about making sadza. Please give me a like, subscribe and hit the post notification button so you know every time I post a new video. I hope you enjoy remaking this recipe. Until next time, good appetit!